Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here to go through all of my stats for 2018. This is probably one of my favorite videos to make every year just because it's fascinating to see how things have changed. This year my charts were a lot more casual, a lot more simple. I felt like I had too many things to track last year and a lot of the things I didn't care that much about to track. But yeah, let's compare the most important parts. This year I read 56% adult books, 23.8% young adults, and about 20% children's books. Definitely read a lot more adult last year. I read 68%, um, but I think that's valid in my goals because I wanted to read more middle grade books to be better versed when I'm in the kids' room in the library. So that is good for me. I like that I read pretty much 40% children and young adult and then the rest was adult next thing to look at books per month definitely had some lagging months you can see summer i feel like this happens every year and then it goes back up for nonfiction november which is pretty good last year i read less in december than i did this year and i think it's because we did so much traveling and i was reading books on the road definitely november is my money month Thank you, Nonfiction November. Let's look at star ratings. I rated so many things four stars last year and not that many things two stars. I think that's one thing that I got really good at this year, which I'm, I'm happy, is that I was more comfortable rating books two stars and even one star because sometimes I feel like if it's truly a one star book, I would not have read it. But sometimes you can finish a book and then really think about it and then be like, no, yeah, really, that's a one-star book. I think this year, 2019, you're going to see a lot more two-star books. And I think five stars will always be my trouble one. It's very hard for me to rate a book five stars. I had quite a few in 2018, which was nice. That's hard. When you read 80 books, like 85 books in a year, and only five of them end up, you feel it in your gut that they're five stars, maybe I'm a harsh writer. <laughs> Let's look at format that I read stuff. This past year in 2018, I read so many things in audiobook format. Wow, it's like looking at that, 52%, more than half of what I read, I listened to it. Yeah, last year, audiobooks was only 27%. So that's a big jump from 27% to more than 50%, just being audiobook total. But it also fascinating that really the only amount of print that I read, 18% hardcover paperback books, because I tracked this year specifically print but in graphic novel format because I'm, I, I don't read graphic novels unless they are in print. It's very hard to get a graphic novel when you're listening to it on audiobook. So I wanted to differentiate graphic novel print and then normal print and you can see just how little I read in print this year by looking at that. Last year I also separated graphic novels, and graphic novels was only 9% when you took into account everything else. Uh, let's look at genre, and then we can look at nonfiction fiction. Genre, I... it's very typical of me, and I really don't change much. I read a lot of memoirs and a lot of coming-of-age stories. This year, I decided to divide my nonfiction more. So I have a political nonfiction, I have a history nonfiction, I have a general nonfiction, which is kind of a catch-all. I don't know where to fit this. <laughs> and you can see that I did read plenty, but the majority of my nonfiction reading is still memoir, even if you add up all of the other nonfiction together. And last year, you could see, well, my coming of age went up, which is interesting. My general nonfiction was way bigger last year. My memoir was really little last year. Hmm, interesting. I read a lot more memoir in 2018. A lot more coming of age and memoir is pretty much what 2018 brought for me. Last but not least, let's look at fiction or non-fiction. Last year, my whole thing was, hey guys, it was 50-50. <laughs> By the time it was like the end of the year, I made sure that it was going to stay 50-50 and I read back-to-back non-fiction fiction at the end of the year, like the last few days of the year, to make sure that it ended up 50-50. I like those numbers. They feel good. This year, though, I read 53.6% fiction and 46.4% nonfiction, which is on par, pretty close, pretty close to being 50-50. I was not as firm about it this year. Um, I did read a lot of middle grade books that are more often going to be fiction than nonfiction, so I think that's where that came from, but still pretty happy with that pretty even split. So I think that's pretty much it. The only other thing that I looked at was page counts, and we all know that 
Vanessa always reads shorter books if she can. My favorite thing to read, <laughs> according to this, is in the 200 to 299 page mark. And then after that, the 300 to 399 page mark. Yeah, I think that's like my sweet spot. Especially when I'm reading graphic novels, it's more often that it's going to end up in that 200 page range. As for 2019, I'm going to track the same way. I think I like the, the things that I tracked in 2018, so I'm pretty much going to just copy and paste my charts from this year, from 2018 to 2019, and go off of that. I have a feeling that the audiobook stuff is going to remain in 2019. I'm going to listen to a lot of audiobooks. I don't really have necessarily any goals. My only goal that I've set for myself is to continue the read 52 books per year thing, which for me is very easy to do, especially because I read so many graphic novels and shorter books. I think that's pretty much the only thing that I'm sticking to, reading my 52 books. Other than that, I think it's going to be a lot more of a free year for me. When I made goals last year, I was very like, oh, this is a very relaxed year, but I still had like eight goals or something. So this year it's literally just read 52 books and just read what you want to read. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that it was interesting to you. It's interesting to me. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.